Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SQL Server, performance monitoring and tuning video brought to you by SQLWorkshops.com. In this video, we will take a look at the extended event locks, lock weights. Yes, the name of the event is locks, lock weights. When it comes to lock weights, one of the important information we need to know is which statements waited for locks and for how long. This is possible with extended events. This is not possible with SQL Server Profiler. So how did we manage this when we didn't have the extended events? I remember the time when I worked at the Microsoft SQL Server development team, we had a DBCC command that gave this information. We used it for tuning benchmarks. Let me show you. If you search for this keyword, stall report threshold, you will find dbcc lock stall report threshold and the time in milliseconds that you can give. This will print in the error log all the statements that waited more than 200 milliseconds for locks. You see this in download.microsoft.com, a PowerPoint presentation, but this is not documented. Even though you find this in microsoft.com, this is not documented and you should not use this. Of course, you have the extended events available now, so you could use the extended events. Let's look at an example. To follow this example along with me, you need the SQL test tool. To get the SQL test tool, you can go to sqltest.org and click on download. There you will find a link to install SQL test. Once you have the SQL test tool, you can click on file open online examples. There you will find the example SQL test underscore X events locks lock weights. Let's click OK to open this example. In this example, we create a table called tab 72. This table has three columns. Column one integer primary key. Column two is also integer. Column three character 2000. We are inserting 2000 rows into this table. We are inserting values from 1 until 2000 for column C1 and C2. Column C2 has no index. We are creating two store procedures, PROC1 and PROC2. PROC1 selects from this table where C2 equal to 1 and 10 ordered by C1. We don't have an index on column C2, so it will do a table scan. And PROC2 updates tab 72 where C1 equal to 20. In our case, column C1 and C2 have same values. Even though this is updating row C1 equal to 20 and this procedure is selecting C2 between 1 and 10, they will lead to conflict. For example, if this update statement begins a transaction, updates the row and keeps the log, this statement cannot complete because it has to do a table scan and it will wait. Let's look at this example. To create this table and the two store procedures, you can click on workload for and start current. The store procedures and the table has been created. Now you can click on settings and comments and copy these statements to one of our management studio windows. Here we will execute store procedure SPU Pro to find weight, block, and locks information. To get the store procedure, you can go to the website sqldownload.com and click on download. There you can look for SPU Pro store procedure according to your SQL Server version and service pack. Here we have SQL Server 2014 and SP1. So I will click here copy the store procedure creation script, go to one of my management studio window and create the store procedure. Let's go to SQL test tool and let's execute workload one and workload two. In workload one, we are going to execute PROC one. In workload two, we are go going to execute PROC two. PROC two is the one which is going to update. If you go to settings and workload settings, here you see we begin a transaction, we roll back a transaction, but we wait up to 10 seconds before we roll back. And if we go to workload one, which is going to do a select, 
Here, if you go to settings and workload settings, we are going to wait two seconds before we connect. Let's execute workload one and workload two concurrently. To do that, we type one comma two in the custom workload and we click on start custom. Now we can go to SPO Pro and execute. There it shows session 54 is waiting for a lock on SQL workshops, schema DBO and table tab 72. And here you can find out all the locks. It has database lock granted, object lock granted, page lock granted. It is waiting for a key lock again on the table tab 72. You can also find the name of the application that is waiting for the lock. Now what we will do, we will go to uh, create the extended event session. To do that, you see here the session 2 or the workload 2 released the lock after 10 seconds and the workload 1 completed after 10 seconds. To create the extended event session, locks lock waits to get the statements that waited for locks more than certain amount of time, we can go to the website sqlvideo.com. Here we can click on X events. Here you can choose the event locks lock waits. Make sure you choose the right SQL Server version and service pack. And here we have increment greater than or equal to 1000 and counter less than or equal to 100. What this means is it will collect lock wait statements where the wait time is more than 1000, is equal to or more than 1000 milliseconds and it will not collect more than 100 events. Let's click on ring buffer and let's script. Now let's copy this script into one of our management studio windows and let's execute the script. This script creates the extended events with the predicate dot what we saw there and also creates a view to read the XML data in the row format. And we will start this event. Now let's go to the SQL test tool and let's start workload one and workload two concurrently like we did before. So the workload two will release the lock after 10 seconds. Workload one connects after two seconds and it will wait for locks for about eight seconds. Now we can go to our extended event based view and we can select. There you see we have one event, locks, lock waits. And the increment is 8047 milliseconds. This means the statement waited 8047 milliseconds to acquire the lock. And the name of the application that waited is SQL test workload one connection one. And here is the statement or the store procedure that waited. Let's make a summary. Locks, lock waits event is very useful to find statements that waited for locks more than certain amount of time. When you are using extended events, always use the counters predicate to limit the amount of events you are collecting. Thanks for watching the video. Send me your comments and suggestions by email. Bye.